And we're back, week two of Road to the Derby. We're down in Arkansas. Last week we had quite the hit by Caleb, uh, your long shot, Caleb, from taking a stand. Uh, $59 payout. Love to see it going against the favorite. We're going to go down to the Southwest Stakes today. Uh, we're going to zip through this card quickly and then talk a little about our picks. Before we start, we'll take a look at our bias report here. Horses playing uh, pretty fair here on this track. Uh, there's nothing that really stands out when we look at the recency bias. Um, the rail is, is not as hot as it's usually been, and the front end has actually been giving up a little bit. I expect it to be a little more sped up for a, a big stakes day like today, um, but we'll start taking a look at the card, starting with race one, uh, with horse number one. Horse number one, uh, this Dallas Stewart trainee caught a hot pace and folded last time out in the slop. Figures for the two-back race in the Jockey Gold Club put the horse in range, uh, but if I'm going to be playing a horse on the front end right here with this type of speed, uh, I believe it's too tough for it. I'm going to take a pass here. What do you think about the second horse, Caleb? Yeah, Andrew. So number two, dash attack. Uh, I think this horse looks pretty good in this spot. He took advantage of that hot pace last time out in the Smarty Jones, made a big move and uh, one going away. Got to prove himself over a fast track since he did catch an off track in both starts. But I think he makes a lot of sense in this field. Number three is don't cross the devil. Uh, this horse was kind of overmatched last time out, and he's 30-1 to 1 here on the morning line. I, I wouldn't totally count him out here. He, he has two wins at Remington while sprinting, and perhaps he didn't handle the off track last time. Uh, he looks like a closer that should get a pretty hot pace today. Taking a look at this four horse here, uh, I think another horse on the front end, we're, we're seeing a, a, a definitely a race here that's going to be projected to be pretty far on the front end, Kavad. I think this horse is, is a little bit of an interesting play, um, not necessarily for me, but been working well, but not with the company that tells me this horse is going to be a derby contender. 10 to 1 morning line, uh, you're going to have to get all of that to get me interested, uh, maybe even a little higher. But if I'm going to be playing speed, I think I'm going to be taking somebody else. Uh, looking at this five horse here, we're looking at a horse that that's a closer. We haven't, or stalker closer, we really haven't seen much in this field. This one is not a closer that I'm going to be looking for. Asmussen has a number of entries here. This seems to be his melt play. Uh, the horse didn't run that great 112 days ago at Keeneland. Uh, really made up some ground, but it was really only pa passing tiring horses. Uh, I think if I'm going to be playing a closer here and play somebody that's coming off the pace, I can find some better opportunities. What do you think of the six, Caleb? Yeah, Osborne's a bit of an interesting play here. He's super consistent with a win in two seconds from three career starts. He exits the springboard mile, which is won by Make It Big. Uh, he is by Tapature, who actually won this race, but I'm still not totally convinced that this horse wants a mile and a 16th at this point of his career. He seemed to have uh, had that waste run last out and then still got run down late. So not sure I'll be going that direction, but you know he's not without a hope in here. And then number seven, uh, Ignitus. This is a horse that I'm not really sure what to make out of. It looks like he used to have a lot of speed, but lately they've tried to train him to be more of an off-the-pace runner, and he's been coming from a little further back. I think he would definitely need to employ those closer tactics in a field uh, in this field today since I don't think he can get the lead. Uh, I think a minor award would probably be the ceiling for this horse. What do you think of the eight, Barber Road? Barbara Road, I'm actually going to talk about this once we finish snaking through this field here. Uh, red Hot, Ricardo Santana Jr. for John Ortiz. This combo here, I, I'm liking more and more. Um, RSJ obviously had a little bit of a cold streak, uh, if you want to call it that, maybe a frigid or Arctic streak. And we had those coming into the Breeders' Cup through Churchill. Definitely starting to heat up back at home in Arkansas where he does well. The horse figures put it in the mix of the stalking style. Uh, really could make this horse pay here. I like the horse in the position, and I'll talk about it a little bit when we finish going through. Uh, we'll take a look at the nine horse here, another Asmussen horse. Uh, some may say this is cheap speed. I have a friend who likes to use the term inexpensive velocity. Um, this horse, I think, is is way overmatched here. I don't see the horse making any any type of move. Uh, it's it's a toss for me. Uh, what would you think of the, uh, the Baffert shipping in here, number 10? Yeah, so I have a little bit of heartburn about this Baffert, and I I'm not a huge fan of this horse, but he unquestionably should be a favorite in a field like this. He's a great at stakes winner already. He's uh, undefeated in two starts, and when Baffert ships into Oakland, you just always have to respect it. Uh, there is a lot of pace in this race. I mean, looking at the HRN pace report, it has a pace rating of like 129, which is 
the highest I've seen since I've started using the reports. So it, it does seem like he's going to be up against it, especially with the outside draw. He is the class of the field and, you know, he definitely deserves to be a favorite here. But I just think that given the, the pace dynamics and the post, there's a couple of factors that uh, could make it a little bit tough for him, especially when you're going to get a very short price. I think one of those pace factors is the horse to his immediate outside, the number 11, call me Jamal. This horse is definitely going to be on the lead or just as forwardly placed as he possibly can be. I don't think this horse really has much chance to make an impact or hit the board, to be honest. He'll be a pace factor, and I think that's probably the most you can say, uh, unless they try to do something totally unprecedented for you know this one-dimensional runner. I think that leaves us with only one horse left uh, at the 12, Vivar. Vivar, way on the outside. Only dead nut closer in the field. Uh, this horse is going to be closing in. Uh, Flo has that clock in his head. We've seen it time and time again. Uh, does pretty well getting up. Uh, if we can get something crazy on the front end, Melt, this horse is going to have uh, the opportunity to close in on them in the center of the track. I'll have this horse in my savers. Last time out, his slop speed figures seem to come back a little slow for me after watching a number of replays and, and against the field. This morning line is going to get cut by a bit, I believe, uh, especially with with this field. I think you're going to see that 12 to 1 go off about 8 or eight or 6 to 1. So not necessarily the biggest long shot in the field, but somebody uh, I'm definitely going to be interested. Uh, we're now going to turn over to our picks for this race. Uh, Caleb, who is your pick for this race? Yeah, so as much as I do respect Newgrange, the Baffert horse, I'm going to go a different direction here. I just, I just don't have confidence in that horse, especially given the pace dynamics at play. I'm going to go to the number two, Dash Attack. Uh, this horse is very versatile. He can sit close to the pace or he can come from far out of it like he did last time. He did take advantage of a hot pace last out and an off track, both of which I think worked to his favor. But I think he's going to get a hot pace again today. Yeah, he has a cozy inside draw, just like last time. He should be able to save some ground. And he was just flying home in that last race at the Smarty Jones. He was just running by horses like they weren't even moving. Uh, huge gallop out. And I really think this horse uh, is going to be in for another strong performance here. Given a likely fast pace, he should be able to set off the leaders and make a big move turn for home. For my pick, I'm going to go in a different direction. I'm actually going to go with that that horse I, I mentioned before, the eight Barber Road. Ricardo Santana Jr. up for John Ortiz. Uh, horses la last time out, figures were okay. Again, we were in the slop. Um, we go two back. Uh, the horse really did look well at Churchill Downs. Um, it was a sprint. The horse is going to be stretching out here. Uh, the horse last time it did stretch out, could hold the numbers. The It did lose to Dash Attack, uh, your pick. So we, we, we do have a, a little rivalry in that type of sense, but I think it's really going to get the stalking trip here. I think you're going to be want to be a little bit more on the outside if you are going to be stalking. Uh, I think there's going to be uh, an opportunity to make that that swing at the top of the stretch and we come into that long stretch at Oakland Park as we're holding on. Uh, I really think this horse is in the right position. It's training well. It's rounding into form. And I, I'm going to say a little bit about Newgrange and, and why I'm not picking him necessarily. I thought that race, they really let Johnny V go on the front end last time. There wasn't much pressure. The fractions didn't come back anything crazy. Um, Baffert ships in the horse that got no challenge on the front end last time and went scot-free in a short field. That's not something that I am necessarily get too excited about. I know the stats say to play the Baffert, but I really think that uh, JV is going to get some, not the freedom again. He's going to get some cheap speed here. That's going to have an opportunity to, you know, burn him out. These are younger horses. We're still talking about horses that are just turning age. Uh, it's not like the maturity where the horse can maybe hold back. I think a couple horses are going to run free and, and JV might be able to get caught up in that. Uh, so this is, this is definitely, a, I'm going to be fading this, this favorite, which I think is going to be heavily favored. And I'm going to be sticking with Barbara road, which I think I'm going to get four or five to one on. Um, who's your long shot in here? Uh, last week you, you gave out that $59 horse. I'm more interested in your long shot than your, than your pick. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should make the long shot off the uh, top selection from now on, but yeah, the long shot I'm going to go with here is actually number four, uh, Kavid or Kavad. This is a horse that uh, some programs and you know software I've looked at has him on the lead. I don't think that's the case. This horse has high pace figures simply by being in a lot of races that had fast paces, but he's never actually made the lead. I don't think he particularly wants to be on the lead. So the concern with this horse is, does he really want the two turn mile and a 16th? 
uh, both of his routes haven't exactly been his best races where he has been much better sprinting. But going back and watching that Smarty Jones, this horse made a middle move into that really hot pace where he was three lengths off the pace. And then at the second call and in the stretch, he actually took the lead turning for home. And then he just moved a little too early, I think, into a pace that was very quick for the way the track was playing and got a little bit tired late and got run down by dash attack. I'd like to see some slightly more patient tactics by Francisco Arietta today. Hopefully wait a little bit longer to make that move because looking at the pedigree, he really should be okay to get this distance. He should be fine going two turns, even if it is a bit much at this point of his career. But he's definitely banged heads with some of the best horses in the country as far as during his two-year-old season. And I think this is a horse that if he can avoid getting too close to what should be a contentious pace, I think he might get first jump on the closers and just might have enough in the tank to hold him off. Where'd you end up, Andrew? I ended up with my long shot at Vivar. Uh, not necessarily a long shot that we traditionally think of. I think we're going to get you know seven, eight, nine to one, somewhere in that range. But I think this is an opportunity for a horse that's a pure setup play. This is not the top five, not top six, probably maybe not even top eight horse in this field. Um, this is a pure setup horse. I'm looking at a jockey that has a clock in his head that's been right over and over again. I'm looking at a pace, uh, as you said on the HRN pace reports, that's astronomical and something that we haven't really seen before. Um, so if this melts, I want a horse where I think is going to have the best kick and the best jockey to put the horse in a position to really hit that line and, and hit him hard. So I'm going to go with the 12 here, Vivar. Um, not going to necessarily get the long shot price I want uh, because of the connections and, and the jockey, but I, I think uh, this is going to be a good opportunity here to have a horse that's going to be flying or, or coming pretty hard at the end to a field that's going to have ran off that first quarter in what I think will be somewhere between 21 and 5 and 22. Um, appreciate you jumping on with me here, Caleb. Uh, Southwest Stakes here today at Arkansas, at, at Arklon Park in Arkansas. Uh, we have a nice field of 12 going a mile and 1 16th. Uh, it should be a, a good opportunity to see some, a possible derby runner coming in. Uh, as Caleb mentioned before, if you're looking for something a little more unique and something you won't see every day, definitely check out the HRN Pro Reports available on Horse Racing Nation, uh, horseracingnation.com, picks.horseracingnation.com. It's something that you won't see anywhere else. It's unique. It separates us from, from other people. It's new information, and it'll give you a good look on today's race. Thanks again, Caleb, and we'll see you next week. I believe we have three derby prep races as we walk in. I'll be down at the Holy Bull, and uh, hopefully we'll get some, uh, some broadcasting from down there. Good luck. Thanks.